Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for a special dish of the show. I'm uh, here at Kim McPherson, McPherson right? I was McPherson, McPherson, right? Yeah. McPherson. <coughs> we say yeah, it both just, ways. Yeah. It, my dad always said McPherson. McPherson. So I've been I've been saying McPherson the whole time, but on the way here, I realized there's no A in there. Like Pearson, there's no A, no Pearson. So McFer McPherson. Uh, so uh, another, another iconic winemaker that I'm going to be uh, hanging out with here. Uh, so do some more Texas wines out here in Lubbock, Texas, and um, so yeah, Kim, let's just kind of you know kind of introduce yourself and kind of tell us how you got into all this whole whole thing here. Uh, I'm Kim McPherson, uh, chief bottle washer, janitor, everything <laughs> here at McPherson Cellars. Uh, uh, the developer of the wines that we had uh, that we're going to taste. Yeah. Uh, I think you'll see that uh, what we're trying to do on the High Plains is something unique that we don't do chocolate and vanilla, which is, you know, Cabernet and Chardonnay. And yeah. So, but been in this now for, let's see, 40 years. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad got me into it. Uh, our father uh, started the, the, uh, the wine business with his friend, Bob Reed. Uh, my dad started growing grapes in 1968 up here, and he and Bob Reed, and uh, Bob was sort of like Doc's uh, side man okay. <laughs> when, they, when the jokes were around. And, but Doc got, uh, they decided to build a winery, and they went out and got investors. And long story short, that is where Yano Estacado is. Now, my mother is still a stockholder in that. They're not big anymore in it, but... She still is a stockholder, so, and uh, the vineyard, Sagmore Vineyard, is is one that I've I've taken over, and me and my guys help me in it, and I have a uh, some of my big growers help me in it because mm -hmm. I I inherited it with my brothers, so to speak, and so we're trying to uh, bring that back into its glory days when. Uh, the thing was making beautiful Sangiovese, still does. It just, actually, because the crop's lower, I think the Sangiovese is really, really good. We do a, re a reserve on that. So. Okay. But here at McPherson, we have concentrated on Southern French, uh, Spanish, and uh, Italian varietals that love the heat. And we use those in all forms of fashion, but my favorite is... Probably the Southern Rhone mm -hmm. varieties, uh, Vignet, of course, which we're going to try here, the 17, right. being our number one white, uh, 1,800 cases of this a year. We don't think that's, we think that's a big producer for us. And then we have the blends, of course, of Merved, Grenache, Syrah, uh, Grenache Blanc, Picpoul, Roussan, Marsan, uh, Italian stuff. We do uh, Trebbiano, uh, we have some Vermentino. Uh, I actually get a little Pinot Grigio mm -hmm. from the guy you just spoke to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we do, we make a white little Muscat Canelli. We're not making a lot of that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then I guess the, the Spanish stuff is, uh, and the red in, in the Italian is Sangiovese. And uh, the, the, the big Spanish thing, because it has a crossover in the Rhone, is Tempranillo, but Morved native to Spain, Grenache native to Spain, Carignan native to Spain. So they crossed over, and so we use those in a blend. Okay. So it kind of works out good for us. Yeah. Uh, 
And then we do occasionally we do some a little we do it a little wine called an Italian field blend, and we'll get a little dolcetto, Montepulciano, Sangiovese. I put Barbera in it, Rufasco, and uh, uh, Aliatico, and we we make a little little red wine out of that. We don't do a lot, six hundred cases. Okay. So all those grapes tend to work up here on the high plains. They they just love the climate. It's it's like we were looking at vineyards today, and they were just they the grapes were thriving instead of just existing. Okay, and that's a big thing. And they were just it's I think it's going to be a huge crop year this year. All the growers say so. So that's a good thing. I think that, well they were Andy was cutting fruit off, so and I think these guys will cut fruit off after the hail season gets by us. And, but uh, everything looks great, and uh, we look forward to another fantastic year. Good, yeah. Uh, you had a little bit of hail the other day too, right? Yeah, not uh, not on anything of ours. <laughs> All right, yeah, that's good. Yeah. So this is our V&A. All right. And this is about 6% Roussan and about 5% Marsan. Okay. And then the rest is V&A. Uh, we didn't put the the blend on the back like we usually do, but every year I think we're going to do this as as a kind of a homage to to the to the Viognier of Rome, where mm -hmm. they they do blend these varieties together. No oak, and here at McPherson, we're not big on high alcohol okay so you're never going to see some of our stuff at 14 and a half 15 or 16 we um <clears throat> i'm on that french thing where you can make really nice wines with a lower alcohol at 13 8 13 mm -hmm. 6 and they do they do taste i think a lot more elegant having yeah, a lower is, alcohol it's super smooth and nice um I think it's got some really good flavor to it. It's got you know, a really great, great amount of white peach to it. Um, it's not, it's not like an over the top, in your face Viognier, you know. No, we don't. And like I said, we you use no oak on these. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a, I have a thing about oak. I think a oak on this would destroy those incredible tropical flavors. Yeah, we'd make it almost like a Chardonnay. Chardonnay yeah. And you're going well. We don't do Chardonnay, so. And, you know, I don't do Cabernet, and people come in here and say, do you have a Cabernet? And I go, no, you, you should go to Napa. <laughs> I think, uh, I think uh, you know, or somewhere in Paso Robles if you want a, a cab. Yeah. So we don't do that. Yeah, yeah I think you're one of the few wineries I, I know in Texas that just doesn't do that. You know? No, I've, I've found that. Bless you. The cab. Little dog over here. <laughs> the cabs, I don't know. I've, I've just, and even though in that vineyard of my dad's, there's still four acres, mm -hmm. but I sell that. Actually, I sell it to my little brother. <laughs> mm. Now, we're going to try one of my, nice. yeah. the Le Capon White. Okay. There they go. Watch those guys. Uh-oh. Driving the forklift. Yeah, there's a, there's a good one. <laughs> so, um, so you've been the, you've been doing this for forty years, but this winery has only been around for about ten, 10 years. years. Yeah, ten years. There you go. You're good. Now, this is the one that won the saddle over here at Houston okay. Rodeo. Now, this is a typical <clears throat> Cote de Rhone white. In the fact that we used a lot of the varieties that would go into a blend. It's uh, Roussan, Marsan, Viognier, Pic Poul, and Grenache Blanc. And if you'll notice the label, well, we don't have a label here, but it's well, my French looking label. Yeah, we can get the, the wine real quick. And try to remind me to like take pictures of these bottles so I can insert pictures when we, uh, yeah. I wanted a French looking so label and my do. graphic designer in uh, California. A little she of that. came up with 
Uh, Basically, thank you so much. The uh, the label, mm -hmm. and this is the in a series. I have the Lake Pen series, which is a rose, white, and red, which I kind of patterned after the Perrins family. Their uh, the red, white, and rose called the Vieta Farm, the old farm with the oh, two yeah, chickens. Yeah. And I said to myself, we can make wines like this on the high plains of Texas all day long. And I have said, you can, and we did. And these always are, you know, the beautiful little wines that, that the grapes love it here. Mm -hmm. They That's why they, we call them the friends. They love being together. Yeah. So it's just it's just really just easy to drink and a little bit a little bit higher in the acidity there. Um I get more of an orange than the peach, mm -hmm. a little more citrus on it. And every year the the blend is gonna be a little different. A little different, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it may be Viognier driven, it may be Roussan driven, uh it may even be Morsan driven. Okay. Um Andy Timmons planted the Marsan for me, and he planted the pick pool for me, and they've turned out to be uh, incredible varieties. The pick pool came about from uh, another Texan that makes incredible wines in Paso Robles, Don Brady at Robert Hall. He had a, he had a wine, he had a pick pool, and I had it, and I said, "God, that's incredible." He said, "You should grow pick pool here. It'd be it'd be it'd be the great man. It's it's so cool." Yeah, Andy. I don't know where he got it. Anyway, it it's unbelievable. It works here, but people are not familiar with pick pool. Yeah, and so it's been sort of a struggle. You have to hand sell it. Yeah, you know, uh, over at Yano uh, earlier today, uh, we did a pick pool, and I think that was the first pick pool I've had in a few years. It's just you know, it's just not. I I, I like I like the grape. You know, it's just but I just haven't had it. On a frequent basis, it hey, just Garrett. Was on my radar, you know. Garrett. Well, hey guys. Uh oh. I'm gonna go get me some myself. All right. <laughs> I want you to. Try, well, that actually the pick came from us. <laughs> hey, Thomas. Thomas. There we go. There you go. Where are your gents? Where'd they go? Huh? Where'd they, your guys go? They disappeared on us. Doing the oh, do All they right. have a do they do you have a pick pool open? Sure. Oh, it's oh, a awesome. six, it's a sixteen. It's beautiful. Okay. You know, and it, this is a funny thing about that pick pool is that the second vintage we only got like two tons the first year or a ton and a half, and it we didn't make it. We just blended it out. But on the second vintage, we we made a pick pool. And we entered it into Anthony Diaz Blues, the, the international, San Francisco International. Don't do the Chronicle. And it won the best white out of 1,900 whites. Nice. And so that told me that we are doing pick pool and we can do pick pool and it works. And so we we won double gold, gold, dun, 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 dun. but it's like, okay, I don't even enter it anymore. Because I know what we, I think we know what we're doing. This is why I enter in competitions mm -hmm. to see how we're doing. And then once you've got it figured yeah, out. Yeah, but I don't think we're gonna, you know. But it's like, it is so. It's it's a, it's a beautiful grape. Yeah. Big producer, nice acid. Incredible flavors. Right. Um, I right sell here. a lot of this in South Carolina. Yeah, really? Yeah. Nice. Because pick pool seems to be their one of their you know, I can walk into a wine shop in Charleston and they may have eight pick pools. Wow. Because they love it with their seafood. Okay, I can see that. I mean I'm not a seafood I don't like seafood, but I can see but I understand oh, yeah, why certain is, wines no, go really good, well with uh, seafood. Yeah, So we're, uh, we love the pick pool. We're just gonna, mm. I'm changing the label up on that. Yeah. I'm gonna have a fun label. Maybe that can stir some yeah. interest in the pick pool. 
So, uh, is there any other white you'd like to try? Do you want to try a white that James Tidwell, my dear friend, and my, Master Song, our, our buddy James, yeah, 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 has yeah bought let's... five cases of. Yeah, I want. I want to know, James. I want to know what wine you're buying. <laughs> I want to. Do you have one of those? All right. This he. <laughs> so James was one of. Uh, he was James. One, of my, one of my first master psalms I interviewed. Um, I, mean, I did it via Skype. It was after it was after a text psalm one year. James and Jason Hysall, mm -hmm. the advanced. He got two cases. So this is from so the no oldest muscat vineyard in Texas. Okay. Bobby Young. All right. It's an older vintage. Oh, we talked about this. Yeah, the dry muscat. Did you talk about this? No, one? we we thought, thought we talked. Um, no, we talked about the dry Shannon. That's dry what we Shannon. About. We're, yeah. we're going to have that too. Yeah. This is a dry muscat from uh, Bobby Young. These vineyards are probably thirty, at least thirty years old. Incredible muscat, and I got like five tons off this one year. And his son Larry thought I was going to make this real sweet muscat, and I said no. I'm making a bone dry muscat, like All a right. Spanish one. And needless to say, <laughs> we still have some. But I did it for the wine club. Yeah. And now it's. Uh, it's a order about a case a month. Who oh, does? Really? Wow. He calls in about Who, James? Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, this is a this is a bone dry muscat. Everybody goes, it's dry. Yeah, it's dry. We can do this here, mm -hmm. but again, you have to educate the public about. Oh, it's not sweet. I know it's not sweet. Yeah, but it's got all the flavors. I put the dry. Sweetness. I yeah. put dry on there. It's got all. So I just so. Was it two weeks ago? I drove out to God, Houston. This is freaking. I'm going to take this one home. Yeah, I, I drove out to Houston to like two weeks ago, uh, for a Moscato d'Asti uh, class, mm -hmm. and uh, which you know. I've had Muscat a few times here and there. Well, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But now I have a better appreciation for, for that wine and the grape. And then at lunch, we ended up having some Barberas mm -hmm. also. Um, but um, this has all the flavor of that without the sweetness. The funny you know? thing about this, when we first bottled this, James' girlfriend, Melissa, mm -hmm. came here because she was working for Pioneer. And I said, try this dry muscat. And she was like, this is incredible. This is what I passed my master's psalm with, was a dry muscat from Spain. And it was just like mm. this. And I went, dang. So anyway, you. James, James <laughs> is. This is outstanding. He says that I should age my wines more and then release them. And, you know, we're kind of getting into that routine. Well, I mean, that was a is, 16 a, pick pool. Yeah. That you had. That was a 16, and this, 16, is a 15 this, this is a 15 on this. This is a 15. And he, he, That's when great. he comes over here, he, he kind of, you know, chastises me and saying, you, you need to let these. And I said, I know, I know, I yeah. know. And he's right. I mean, I think they do have an aging potential that, we're, that we've missed out on. But yeah, that was a, it didn't come up in, in, in my interview with uh, Jason. Uh, earlier today, but he's talking. He was talking about how they're over at Yano. They're they're trying to work on having a, a lot, of, you know, some library wines because we are, you know, there are some we have some Texas wines here that can age, and we want to showcase that we can age some we can age these wines. Well, I've not seen, every wine, but you know, mm -hmm. there are certain wines that that can that can definitely age. I've seen the Viognier's, the Roussons age really nice. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have? What other white wine that you, that's odd would you like to try? You want to try the dry Shannon or you want Let's to try, try the dry Shannon? Yeah, because I was very. Um, I mean, I've had. We dry have no Shannon. more fifteen. I mean, I've had dry. You know, I've had reverse. You know, uh, sec and all that. I mean, I've had that, but I want to. I want to try a dry Shannon from here because I think it'd be cool. Well, this is an older vineyard. This okay. year, it's forty years old. Yeah. Yeah, it's over in Hockley County, which is directly west of here okay and it's 
had ownership changes and a, a little Mexican guy by the name of Joe Vasquez bought it about, I'm going to say 10 years ago and has nursed it back to health. And he might, it's not a big vineyard, but he might get five or six tons of Chenin Blanc off of it. Okay. And, uh, you know, one year he got a hail and this and that. And, right. But this is an old vine Chenin. It's what we call it, old vine. Because I think 40 years old is pretty old for around here. Yeah, I mean. Uh, we're going to save these. Yeah, this is a uh, this is a 17 because 16 we didn't have one. That's when he got okay. hailed out. The, the uh, 15 was the one that turned Andy Myers on in D.C. to oh, it. Right, okay. And, you know, it had tartrates in it because, and some of my wines will have tartrates, and okay. we'll let you have a rinse there. All right. But we don't, uh, we don't mind that uh, because we, we don't do a lot. This is the most we've done of this is 600 cases. It's usually like 200 or 300 right. cases. He had a good year in 17. If you'll notice, I'm a huge fan of the screw cap. I love screw caps. I mean, I think, I, I think in some ways they're a superior closure to cork. I mean, they're, yeah, they're easy to open for for a lot of people, but I think you you eliminate cork chain. Yeah, this old world, you know. Field. Yeah. And you you've got, and you can get screw caps that have you know a, a, a similar um, oxygen transfer rate or whatever that whatever OTR actually stands for, you can get those now, but I just think, you know, you, you can keep freshness in a wine mm. for much longer, mm -hmm. you know, less chance of, of oxidation happening, you know? Really a, a beautiful wine. And I've, I'm going to, mm. I told everybody, I'm going to make this. If it, you know, I don't really care. I'm going to make it if I have to sit <laughs> on it. The 15 was, un, it was just so beautiful. This is really nice. It's really, really nice. Now, this is what he's serving in D.C. right now. Yeah, you see he's doing a by the glass and... By, by the bottle oh, and yeah. the glass. And all in. He's going through mail. a lot of it, too, right? Huh? He's going through a lot of it, too, yeah. yeah. Mm. Now, the other Chenin Blanc we do, which you're going to try, the sparkling, that's, that's a young vineyard. It's 12 years old, but... Uh, Russell Leopard grows up, and he bought that vineyard already planted, and he's totally redone it, and it's beautiful. And he picks that for the sparkling for us. Okay. Seventeen, eight to eighteen five bricks is perfect, and then we make the cuvee. So this is I love this wine. I had this wine last night. Oh, very nice. But. You made 600 cases. Now, you, you source most of the grapes. Uh, you, you have I know you have some vineyards, right? But do you source most of it? Uh, or I so, it... source 95% of okay. my stuff. Uh, even the Sangiovese, the regular one, it's got some of the Sagmore in it, but I get Sangiovese from Russell. I get Sangiovese from... Uh, well, I can use this glass. It's we're going to use these glasses. Yeah, that's fine. Because it'll be... I can smell it better. Yeah, it's, it's better. Yeah. And um, I mean, it looks better in those glasses. Andy's, <laughs> Andy's dad, and there's we get Sangiovese from. That's three different growers up yeah. there. So anyway, you'll try that in a minute. So all right, now we're going to try. You want to try a rosé? Yeah. Well, they're. While he's getting that ready, or you want to? No, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do that last. Okay. We'll rinse our glass out. All right, cool. Yeah, let's do the rosé. This is brand new. This is an eighteen uh, state bottle, three hundred and forty cases produced. Oops. I'm gonna give you a little rinse. Okay. Yeah, Hand picked, whole cluster press. So we'll see how this is fared. I actually had an Italian version of this a few weeks ago. 100% Sangiovese. No, yeah, this is. Oh, it's nice, warm. Mm hmm. 
We'll probably make this again because it's so much easier with that hand picked fruit. It's so hard to get hand pickers and Yeah. I mean that seventeen rows took a day and a morning. So we have to keep it in a cooler. Right. Mm. Oh man. I mean this is as good as any other rose you're gonna get from France, you know, or anywhere else in the old world, you know. Well, we figured it, we kind of like the old world feel to it. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, these old vines, God, they are gnarly looking. Uh, actually, these vines, you know, these vines are on the east side. And the only way that they'll ever be machine picked is if I cut them back to the ground and retrain them up. And oh, I don't man, think yeah. I'm going to do that. No, you probably destroy it. They probably lose their character. Hmm. So, actually, uh, they may be in that picture. I have to look up We're, there somewhere. Okay. Yeah, they're hand picking it. Okay. Up here in this picture. Uh, so be careful because you got a microphone attached. To I know. It. I'm not going <laughs> to spin around. So, yeah, they're. You'll see them in a minute. Okay. They're out there hand picking it. All right. All right, now we're going to go into the red program. No, All let's right. do the. You want to do the sparkling? Yeah, why not? We can I, do that. I'm going to wait. I want to have a glass of that. I'm going to have a full glass. So am I, yeah. Because the be, end of we'll the day. Fi we'll finish with that, yeah. Okay. You're in for a real treat here because I'm going to let you try the brand new Senso. All right, yes. 2018. We just bottled it. Now, granted, we only bottled it two weeks ago. Okay. But. Being as fresh and nice as it is, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's unbelievable for me. Yeah. I told Spencer he did a great job. I'm going to dump mine. I'm going to get me yeah. a full, beautiful glass of this. This is 100% Senso from two vineyards. This is part from Andy and part from Farmhouse in Brownfield, okay. Texas. And this is picked for red. We let this hang. I don't know. It's just... So when's the last time you saw a red Senso and not just as a rosé? Right? Yeah. I mean, and no oak on this because oak would... Just, would, just, would destroy well, I think it would destroy this yeah. the incredible red cherry, dark cherry. Mm -hmm. And this is what the French one that my daughter gave me... It was about, you're never going to get a lot of color out of Senso. Okay. That's why they make a rosé grape. They're, uh, they're really a table grape in France. Okay. They have a thick, thick skin, and they have a lot of, they have a pulp like a table grape. And uh, they're very tough. And when you, mm. you can give, you can get color out of them. If you ferment on them and you pump them over and you do all the stuff, you'll get this is a, this is about as dark as you're going to get it really. And this is, this is why. Wow, it's super tasty. Yeah, and the cherry really carries through. I love this one. It's almost like maraschino cherry, you know, and and like the real stuff, not the not the not the bright red ones, but like the the, the actual like stuff you get from Italy. Very much like that, and you know, very, very dark black cherry. And well, my daughter, raspberry, all that kind of stuff. My brother wrote, he writes my copy a lot of it, and then my daughter kind of goes over it. So we, we don't do <laughs> pulling <laughs> boners in it. But uh, my little brother hit the nail on the head. This is a very flirtatious red. Mm. Okay. And it's not, are they long lived? They can be. Okay. This is probably the closest thing you're going to get to a Pinot Noir. Yeah. In my wine. Yeah. <laughs> because we don't do Pinot Noir. Yeah. So. It's got yeah, the I, acid. I don't know of many Texas Pinot Noirs. Mm. And if then there are some, I, I either I've had them and didn't like them or I just haven't had them. So. Why would you bother? I don't know. There's some guys, there's, there's a guy, there's a couple of growers. Yeah, one guy's got 10 acres of Pinot Noir. Hmm. You know, it doesn't even make good sparkling. 
Well, it's okay, but right. you really have to acidify it. All right, on, right. Our, on our red program, we're going to go down. What more red do you have open? Because I think it ought to be open. Let's bring that over. It's this. All right. All it's right. a 16. 100 percent. No, this one is the one I want. This is the 16. All right, the one that we want. This right. is, and it has some air on it. Good. Let me Thanks, let me sir. taste it first. Okay. Let you where I vet it. Let me vet it. <laughs> um, we good? <laughs> All right. Kim says we're good. This has maybe 5% French oak. Okay. This is a 16. We can, we can make wines like this all day long. Morved's the best red that we have up here. Best producer. Bud's out late. Mm -hmm. Great ripening. Uh, no problems in the vineyard. Uh, good producer. Uh, no winter problems. Uh, Andy Timmons will tell you that he has five reds. Okay. This is number one. Number two is Senso. All right. Number three is uh, Carignan. Number four, Sangiovese. Number five is Tempranillo. All right. In his list right. of favorites. So, yeah, with, with being a late butter, it, it kind of helped avoid I mean, a that, lot of the. There's air on it. It's good. It'll avoid a lot of the, the issues with spring uh, mm -hmm. frost and all that. We don't have any oh, bread in that, or you'd call it a pen doll. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is uh, Andy's. This is Andy's more red from his home place. Hmm. And then he went up on price. And I said, Andy, I still get a little bit, but <laughs> see when I when we made this, then everybody now in the hill country says, Oh Andy, we want some, we want some, we want some. Well, and I don't have a contract with Andy, it's basically our handshake. Handshake, yeah. And so we let some of this go, but I did keep some of it. Yeah. No, this is really nice. Yeah. No uh, oak. There's some spiciness to it. I mean, I know that that's from the grape, not from the oak, really. Yeah, um, the, we're not, no, we're not, not really, yeah, not, not oak spices. We're not banging this up with oak. Yeah. You know, we're not big oak guys. I mean, we probably, in all our oak program, we might use 15% new oak, maybe 12% mm -hmm. in all the, the wine. Yeah. We have found that a lot of this stuff is just, it just doesn't take oak. It doesn't need oak. You know, it's fruit driven, and that's yeah. what we like. So, um, do you have the new La Herencia, don't you? Is that the 16 or the 7? Oh, yeah. Let's try that one. All right. So, yeah, tell us about this one because this one I'm actually not familiar with. More red? No, the La Herencia. Oh, the oh, La Herencia. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a story behind this. Yeah. You know, Tempranillo, they say, oh, that's Texas new grape. Well, I'm like Andy. It's not like, oh, man, I'm going to live and die around Tempranillo. Okay. okay. So there is a gentleman in Dallas, and his name is Clint Barrett, and he's an icon in Dallas. And he works for Goody Goody on Oaklawn. Okay. And he said, I said, I'm going to do this Tempranillo. And he said, well, if, if you bring me a Texas Tempranillo that's 30, 40 bucks, I'm not going to put it in. And I said, why not? And he said, I've got 15 over here under $12, and two of them have 90 ratings from Spain. And I said, you know, you're right. You're right. He said, Tempranillo is a commodity in Spain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I said, well, what if I brought you a blend of the Spanish grapes? And it was only like 14 bucks, 13. He said, I'll stack it up. So La Herencia was born with Clint Barrett. And this is all the Spanish varieties, like I said, that are native to Spain. Yeah. Except Syrah. 
Okay. But there's so much Saran's paint, it could be native, but it's right. not. But it's this is this could be Tempranillo. You could call it legally, but we don't. Okay. So we call it the heritage, the Hidencia, okay. or the inheritance which I've spent. So <laughs> this is a, an old world, kind of like a Crianza. Okay. It's uh, it's got just enough old world kind of yeah. A little, it's got a little tiny little bit of bready. Yeah, it, it does. But it's, it does. But that's what makes it unique. Mm-hmm. Now those barrels are gone, but it added complexity to this, and this wine's done very well. I'm yeah. Like, oh God, people, I'm I'm like, this is an old Spanish Tempranillo. Mm -hmm. Now the only grape missing in this that I want to put in this is Graciano. Okay. And I have Graciano finally coming in this year. Yeah, I don't, that's a grape I've not heard of being grown here. Well, at least not in. Good well, there's a probably. There's probably only maybe 10 acres on the high plains. Okay. And that may not even be that much. Wow. This is a wine that's grown from 200 cases to 1,800 cases this year. Hmm. Uh, so the, the phone got too hot because I was charging at the same time. So um, basically, I'm pretty sure we got to the point where I, I said, if you blinded me on this, I would think it's a Crianza. Um, and you had said that's exactly what you're looking for. Exactly. Yeah. What I, that what we try to look for is like, we want our wines to have an old world feel because these are the varieties that are, are found in the big old world countries. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, so there was Rioja people that was in, that was in town, uh, San Antonio, a couple months ago, about a month or so ago, and talking to some of the winemakers, you know, they're, they're like their Crianza, you know, they want it to have that fruit they want to have that bright yeah. fruit flavor to it, which is what this has. You know, mm -hmm. it's not the old dusty, which you know that's great for Rioja, for like a yeah. Gran Reserva, or whatever. But yeah, so it's you know the younger was stuff. They want to have that brightness uh, of fruit, not have necessarily the the because they're not old. They're they're young. Mm -hmm. so. but yeah. When I was in Spain, we saw we were in Rioja and we saw the old old bodegas, you know, that have been mm -hmm. there, and then. There's some really modern, and the barrels are new and beautiful, and it's almost got this California feel, you know, yeah. with the oak and a bigger, you know, alcohol. I don't know. It's it's sort of like they've gone on this side, mm -hmm. and and they were good wines. Don't get right, me wrong, yeah. but they were they were entirely different from where you went to the old caves and you go, God, how can they have a wine good in these barrels? Yeah. I mean, it's impossible, but no, they do. <laughs> so it, it's amazing. It was just amazing as a winemaker for me to go, I couldn't have this barrel. I mean, it would be like <laughs> death to a wine. <laughs> no, they do it all the time. Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. So, all right, the next wine. We're going to have one more, then we're going to have champagne, okay? Right, or do you have good. time? Do we have time? I got, I got all the time in the world. I don't have any more appointments, unlike today's appointment, but we all were running late, so that actually worked out. It worked out good. <laughs> it, worked it worked out really, really worked good. out good. Because I didn't finish at Yano until 2 o'clock, which was when I was supposed to be here. And it's only like, what, a 15, 20-minute minute minute. drive. That's fine, because we but, were on our way me, back. And let me stop off for a Whataburger and like get something to eat. Because <laughs> <laughs> all we had it. All we had over there was a couple a couple of pistachios we had with the, I thought one thing was rosé or something like that. We're going to have the new San Giovese. Can, we, can you open a bottle or do you have one? The new one? Yeah, the new one, of course it's. I, I was out, I'm out of this wine all the time, at least yeah. for three months. Oh, wow. So I told Bratcher, my broker, I said, we're going to boost up production where at least mm -hmm. I run out and I have the other one ready. This one. And, and I know this sounds bad, and my daughter would just freak. Uh, the day we bottled this, the week after we bottled it, mm -hmm. Republic picked up almost half of it. Oh, wow. Because I was out. Oh, man. Yeah. And it's like, uh, no bottle aging time? No. So this is what I don't want to get into. Mm -hmm. So now, say we're going to make, make make the production where at least I can have a couple of months at least in the bottle. Right. Um, this wine has become a a symbol. For, I never enter it in competitions anymore. Uh, if it's on shelves, there's sometimes I've seen signs 
San Gervais, they coming back. Don't worry. I've seen that with La Herencia. Oh, really? Uh, I've got restaurants that will hold the space open for this. I'll tell you the first in Austin, um, uh, uh, the one down there near the, to the convention center. Um, God help me out. Moon. Moon. Oh, I'm not familiar. What's it's been this? there forever. Okay. Larry's the chef and one of the owners. Oh, man. I probably should Moon, know it. Moon. Uh, I can't this think is going to be bad. Is. Don't put edit this out till I remember the name. <laughs> Forgive me, Larry. Moonshine. 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 Okay. God, he's had it on the list. He's like he's like Jose Andre Andres. Yeah. Here we go. Here, give us a little bit, Noah. All right. Noah had to separate the. So is this the one? That, is this the one that I? Yeah, this is so. This is this is the leap. This so, is the one you have thirteen thirty seven. So, so thirteen thirty seven. Yeah. I got this at the house. Hadn't opened it up yet, so now we're gonna have right. it. So yeah. this is the one of the lighter ones that we've okay. had. Hundred percent Sangiovese. So it's a Brunello, but it's made like a Chianti. <laughs> so you'll see that it has a little acid because okay. I love Chiantes, and so it's uh, three different vineyards. Part of this is Docs. French oak for a year. This has probably got the most oak of any of the wines, but it's a, uh, it's, it's a beautiful little Sangiovese. It's outstanding. There. It's, yeah. you know, and we can do this grape. Yeah. This grape is perfect for this climate. It gets, mm -hmm. it gets, I think, good color and it gets great flavors. Yeah. And Doc's is an Antonori clone Okay. That he's had for forever. And the others are a Brunello clone. So theirs are big berries. Docs are Docs is a smaller berry. Okay. And so I think blended together they they're just, you know, they make a but you you have that acid mm -hmm. like oh, a yeah. Chianti and we'll be yeah, I mean, like, I'll be out of this one now because they, they took camp. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay, but I just, you know, we were just doing 1,300, 1,250, 1,300, 1,330. And every year, and I said, we're going to have to do more than this because yeah. we, just, we just run out. We mm -hmm. literally run out. And here's Bradshaw. When are you going to bottle it? When are you going to bottle it? We bottle it, and then it's like gone. And I said, oh, yeah. man, <laughs> we ain't got no time on it. You know, and I, I'm. So you're saying is I probably should kind of let it sit for a little bit at home? I would let that sit for at least another four or five months. Oh, absolutely. I can do that. Because already, I think it'll already, be very, very really nice. nice already, already. I know, but I, I think imagine. it'll be a lot nicer if you. Yeah. Because we only bottled that in uh, probably. February or March. Okay. Well, then I'll definitely let it let it sit in the let it sit in the cellar for a little bit longer. You know, as light as it looks, it's got incredible body to me. Oh, it does. Yeah. Yeah. So we're. I'm. I was a little. God, man, it's, it's Spencer goes, well, Kim, it's what we got. Now, the color this year. I mean, but it just turned out beautiful. Yeah. You know, sometimes color doesn't necessarily. No, it doesn't mean body. Anything. It doesn't mean body. So. Yeah. You know, just like, you know, like on rosés, I've told people, some people see that really, really like kind of red rosé and things are like a sweet, like, like sweet. I'm like, no, that doesn't, you know, the, no. the color does, I mean, yeah, it's more extraction and I get that. So there might yeah. be something a little more with that than mm -hmm. a really, really light rosé, but you know, and you can have light rosés that are like full of fruit flavors and maybe not necessarily sweet, but you know. This one has the flavor to me of a, yeah. of a kind of an old world feel mm -hmm. that I like, uh, that, you know, it's not a. Provence rosé, and it should be because it's San Giovese, but right. uh, just that it had, you know, one more wine, just okay. humor me. Yeah. Do you have the, do you have the Lake Upon Rosé open because it is a 17 okay. and it is, um, it's beautiful. So Rosé have a little bit of age on here, huh? Yeah. And a little bit of body. Okay. You're going to really, we'll clean our glass with this. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's, oh good. yeah. That's beautiful. I have such great guys up here. Now, you know what? Just pour us a little because we're going to pour it out because we have Sangiovese in here. 
Now tell me the 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 blend on this one in the back. Uh, it's fifty two percent senso, forty two percent grenache, and six percent roll. There you go. All right. This is the last year that I had roll. Yeah. This year they don't I mean they got in no roll. Oh man. <laughs> Men got in no vermentine. <laughs> So for my viewers at home, um, is roll a, a, a name that's used in certain parts of Italy? Um, no, it's used in only in southern France. Ah. In Italy, it's called Vermentino. Vermentino. Right. Okay. So. It's also for me, too, because I, I knew it was Vermentino, but I was like, I didn't really understand so where you the. See how the, the heaviness of this comes. Yeah. My brother and I and our wives, we, we were in France, and we went to Chateau Clan, the home of Whispering Angel, you know, and. <laughs> This rosé reminds me of one they had that was, gosh, it was like 50 or 60 bucks. Mm -hmm. And it was a big rosé. Oak barrel aged and all this. And it was, it was big like this. That's great. You know, get a little age on it. Gives yeah, this one aged. See, now James Taylor would go see Kim. Age on these things are incredible, not see. I know. <laughs> he very he is right. He's right. Mm-hmm. James is awesome. Let's just put it that way. So. I will say that I know you don't see you know rosés at seventeen. I buy them. Yeah. Every now and then I'll see them. I'm going to buy that and I'm going to try it out and see what it's like because I think they have aging potential. If you know now this all the rosés we have or true rosés. We pick the grapes for rosés. Okay. Okay? So we don't do any saunier. Okay. So, rosé. Okay. That means they don't bleed anything off. Is no, case. we pick it at 22 bricks, mm -hmm. tops maybe. And the skin contact time is from Brownfield, 38 miles away to here. Yeah. And so you don't have a lot of that. And we... Uh, Press it. We don't press the bejesus out of it. We, you know, our free runs probably 130, 140 okay. gallons instead of 170. Okay. Hmm. Nah, okay. That's stellar, man. So there's our some of our lineup. And yeah. Now we're going to have the, the incredible bubbles. old sparkling. All right. Noah will now pour the sparkling wine. I right. like to call it a Cremant de Loire. All right, let's <laughs> pour a little in here and we'll dump them because we must not spoil yeah. the incredible. Thanks, sir. My brother says every year, he goes, gosh, Kim, this is the best one. Gosh, Kim, this is the best one. And I say, John, he says, no, really, this one is the best one. <laughs> he really liked this one. 100% right. Shannon Blanc, Russell Leopard Vineyards, Charmot. John loves the Charmot for our aromatic varieties. Okay. This is a brute. It's 1.1% residual. Okay. It's got pear, apple. Hmm. This this was huge in D.C. in the East Coast. Yeah. And I guess they just got it in, and everybody's like, ah, oh, this is an incredible little sparkling wine. What does this retail for? I'll tell you. I'll tell you, Mark. <laughs> Glad you asked, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> this retails for about <clears throat> uh, anywhere from 14 to $16. Yeah. I know. Crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. And it's really blossomed out for us. Mm -hmm. Now, this is on the yeast for mm, at least nine months to Raj. Okay. Because when he gets it, he just can't get to it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, and we send it to him like this. It's this color almost. It's, it's clear. But okay. Now, when he adds everything to it and it just sits there like the 18. Yeah. We sent the 18 to him in September, end of September. Okay. Yeah. 
and it's been, been in a tank, and he's, I don't know, he always says, ah, man, Kim, it's great. It's got six atmospheres. Man, it's beautiful. So what, what are you going to do when I get to it, when I get around to it, when I get to it? Yeah. Let me, this one may be in there a year because Crush is coming up. He yeah. said, I'm not dicking with that thing. Yeah. So maybe. So it, it's on Tiraj somewhat. Yeah. I don't know if your viewers know what Charmat is. Um, they may not. So go ahead and explain that real quick for me. Charmat is where you take the wine and you put it in a high pressure tank. This tank's old. 2,000 gallons, and they're double insulated like a, a beer tank. And you put your sugar and your yeast, yeast food in the cuvee, and it ferments in the tank under pressure, like a giant bottle. Yeah. So just look at it as a giant bottle. So everything is, is done under pressure. Racking it, filtering it, bottling it is done under pressure. So it takes specialized equipment and the filler is is unbelievable i mean this i i was wa watching them do this uh not mine but one of his and it's it's really kind of neat the whole the whole thing's under six atmospheres of pressure mm -hmm. and it's done cold they do they they don't label they just cork it and wire hood it and then it goes and it sits and it kind of warms up a little bit and then they can label it because it's cold they do it everything's yeah. cold to keep and the gas stays in it mm -hmm. and it's just like it's like doing it in a bottle but in a bigger form as if you were doing making it method champenois mm -hmm. you riddle it riddle it riddle it freeze the neck pop the crown cap off blows the yeast out you dosage it cork it wire hood it yeah now this is all done in one step so yeah. to speak And so, Chenin Blanc is very well adapted to Charmat. You can get this in Central Market, maybe. Maybe? I don't know. I'll have to go check it out. I don't think they have it. <laughs> you guys are different. You know, y'all are different than in the HEBs. I heard that. <laughs> you heard that? I've heard that, yeah. Yeah, you all have your own little life over there. You, yeah. You have wines that, you know, well, y'all should have your central market. Yeah. So it's different. Yeah. And I go into that one that you're in at the Gucci. Yeah. And I usually, if I drive down there, I usually go over there and get a case of different stuff. <laughs> they got some good stuff there. Absolutely. They do yeah. have some good, great stuff there. Yeah. Yeah. I pick out all kinds of wacky things yeah. that I want to try. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And that's, you know, you used, you used to be able to do that in a backpack because I'd fly down there and you'd, you'd fill your backpack up full yeah, of wine. Can't, do get on the, can't do it anymore. No. So that sucks. <laughs> I love doing that. My wife yeah. goes, what's in the backpack? Well, I got a case. It's heavy, but I got it's a case. It's heavy, but it's, yeah. This is outstanding. Well, Mark, this is our happy home. And we have, these are our wines. And yeah. we're uh, proud of them. We like them. You know, I don't make these. We make the wines. I don't sell them. They sell them. Mm -hmm. They do a great job. And uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed your visit here at to McPherson Cellars, this this little tasting room. Mm -hmm. I thought, oh heck, we won't get but you know five people a month in here. No, it's packed. It is grown. Yeah, it's it's not Fredericksburg, right? But yeah. it's it's good for Lubbock. It is, you know, and it's a it's a beautiful room. You know, we got we got to see you know, just hearing the story about what the old, the the the. The prior tasting room was, and, and all the stuff you did, and seeing the stove, and, and you know all the artwork in there. This is the Coke. This is where they bottled the Coca Cola. Okay, yeah. In front of this window, so when you walk oh, wow. down the sidewalk, you could see them bottling the Coca Cola. Okay, that was cool. Yeah, in the 1930s. Yeah. You could come in and buy a Coke for a nickel. Oh man. Right there. Yeah. And so if you go look at the wall out here, you can see the old pictures that they had, and and uh, so the guy's back is to the window. And, you know, he's watching the bottles go by. 
So, very cool. Well, we're going to wrap this up. And, uh, you know, Kim, you've been a gracious host and it's been outstanding to hang out with you um, and hear, you know, what you've done over the years and, and built this built this place. And then just, you know, your attention to detail and just the, the, the cool the cool varieties that you're using that you don't necessarily see everywhere else. Um, and I've been a fan. I've been a fan of your wines really for a very, very long time. Well, thank you. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, any, anytime I'm able to, you know, help promote Texas wines, you know, there's, there's certain wines in, in yours being one of them is, is one of the ones that, you know, always is usually in that, that conversation of you should try these wines. And, uh, it's, it's been a long time. I've been meaning to come out to, to, to Lubbock in this area for, well, not quite the whole 10 years of the podcast, but at least the last nine mm -hmm. years, ten, eight or nine years that I started doing these interviews. And uh, it's been great, and I really appreciate it. Well, thank you, Mark. Yeah, thank appreciate you so it. much. Thanks for coming out. I know we're, uh, we're not close to San Antonio. No, we're not close, but. <clears throat> but I've driven down there in five and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of almost <clears throat> did five and a half uh, going to Plains, Texas. I, well, I, I well I did stop for lunch. So if you took the lunch out, we yeah. probably did in five right. and a half hours. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, um, so yeah, we're gonna wrap it up, everybody. Uh, thank you all for stopping by. Uh, you can click the links above to friend me up. There's links below about the winery and all fun stuff. Um, and uh, we'll see everyone again next time.